Never allow your baby to fall asleep with a bottle filled with anything except for water. And then, uh huh. And then, I didn't know about this. This was part of the slide when they, you know, when I was looking through the lecture, someone says, you know, pacifiers should not be dipped in anything sugary. And I was like, who would do that? But I guess some people do. So I thought I would add it up. And uh, okay, uh, eating habits. Okay, uh, anything that can break down into carbohydrates, which we talked about. Uh, pretty much can cause cavities. Uh huh. Uh, what did see? Starchy foods, potato chips, uh, crackers, and um, okay. Sticky foods are worse for teeth because they don't wash off the teeth as quickly and as easily. And I'm talking about the fruit snacks and the fruit roll-ups and the raisins. Uh, and uh, so, candy and cookies are not the only things bad for teeth. I mean. Honestly, I would rather a child have a Hershey's Kiss rather than a fruit snack because I really think uh, Hershey's Kisses washes away easier than fruit snacks do. So uh, just some FYI there. These are bad for teeth. That's pretty much the slide says it all. Three of top ingredients are sugars. Fruit, juice concentrates, corn syrup, sugar. Corn syrup, sugar, uh, dried corn syrup. That, the syrup, has sugar in it. So this is what is like top ingredients right there in your fruit snacks. Healthy snacks like fresh fruit and cheese are better not only for your teeth but also for the overall health of your baby. Um, I like this part, the fresh fruit. People come up to me and go, well, fruit snacks are bad. Uh, why are you saying fruits are okay now? Again, fruits wash away easier. Fruit snacks are dehydrated. The water is out of them, so it's concentrated sugar in them. So I don't have any problems with grapes, apples, and just the fresh fruits. And you know they wash away easily, but it's just the fruit snacks that I have a problem with. And then the cheeses are really good, you know, um, string cheese, things like that. So, um, okay. Let's see. Um, so again, your child's dental health depends less on what they eat and more on how often. Okay. Now, now we talk about what, and you're like, what are you talking about? You know, more on how often. Again. You remember the Venn diagram at the bottom? So matter of how often you're putting food in your mouth. Every time you put food in your mouth, it takes three hours for your mouth to recover. Three hours is the magical time. So if I ate right now, my mouth will not be happy for another three hours. That's, that's the magical time. So it's, if your child eats something, it's a matter of how often. Okay, go ahead, next. A lick of frosting starts the same acid attack as eating the whole cake. So if your child wants to lick frosting or eat the entire cake, it doesn't matter. It's still the exact same thing. Because, I mean, if your child eats the whole cake in five minutes, guess what? Three hours later, it's still the same thing. I'm going to offer less sticky snacks, uh, jello, pudding, yogurt. That's good. And... And this is the big thing. Oh, what did we think of? Do not allow grazing. This is what we talked about. At will feeding. That if you can cut down on it, that will be the best. Because I know a lot of families where children come in and everything's available for them. They come in and they eat. And then they go on. Then 10, 15 minutes later, they come in, they grab some juice, drink, go on. Then 15 minutes later, well, guess what? They haven't, they haven't had three hours for their mouth to recover, guess what's going to happen in these kids' mouths and guess how much cavities is going to happen. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh -huh. okay. So this is kind of ideal, but I mean, brush after all meals if possible. That, that's really going to cut down on the bugs in your mouth, also the food debris that's left in there. Uh, so that's helping. I mean, it's ideal, but if it's possible. Okay. So we talked about sodas. So um, has increased, you know, over the past 50 years, unfortunately. Okay, go ahead. 40% of preschoolers drink more than eight ounces of soft drinks a day. This is preschoolers. Um, I mean, the statistics say it all. Uh, okay. Now this is what, this is the pediatrician recommendation. The pediatrician, does not recommend more than six ounces of fruit juice a day, and you've got 40% of preschoolers drinking more than eight ounces of soft drinks, which is not in fruit juice a day. So, um, 
there are some numbers to digest. And uh, since we've talked about diet soda can also cause cavities due to the acids. Okay. <clears throat> Acid plus sugar is equal to trouble. So here we are. So let's look down here. So anything below this level right here is bad, okay? I love this in blue, pure water. That's your best drink that you can get. And um, anyways, nobody drinks battery acid, thank God, that's good. Okay, so Pepsi, look look at the pH here, 2.52, 2.49. That's a really acidic pH, and you've got how much sugar in that, Pepsi and Coke. So doing a lot of damage there. Children love Hawaiian fruit punch, you know? It's like, oh wow, fruit juice, fruit punch, wow. Look how acidic that is. And look how much sugar. It's uh, really high. Oh, here's a favorite. Gatorade. I drink this, actually. 2.95. Still, you know, acidic. And it's got sugar in it. So if you keep looking, um, Minute Maid grape soda. Here's the acidity. And look how much sugar. 11.9 teaspoons of sugar in that. So just remember, I mean, this is all the acidic stuff. And so let's look at something here. Look at Diet Pepsi. Oh, it's 3.05 acidity, but no sugar. Wow, that's great, but it's still 3.05. So 7 is neutral, by the way. 7 is neutral. That's what you really want to shoot for. Anything below this level can cause cavities. So uh, just something uh, to remember. So anytime you have acid, you have sugar, and uh, bacteria spells trouble. <laughs>